was America's first billionaire, America's most notorious lawman, the first black mayor of a major city, and the only Major League Baseball player to be killed during a game from a baseball have in common their final resting place. Join me today as we tour Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio with Walk With History. I'm standing in front of the memorial mausoleum where President Garfield is buried along with his wife, Lucretia. President Garfield was our 20th president of the United States. He was president for 200 days. He was assassinated or shot four months into his term in Washington, D.C. on July 2nd, 1881 by Charles Goudeau. He then lingered for four months. At the time, doctors did not wash their hands. They did not wash their instruments. And James Garfield actually died from blood poisoning. He died from his uh, injury. He was shot in the back and it went um, into his abdomen, and he died from that injury on September 18th, 1881. Charles Goudeau is then, then executed in July of 1882. His defense is that I shot Garfield, but I didn't kill him. The doctors killed him. You're kidding. And that is kind of true. This mausoleum was built, $135,000. It has some great stained glass windows dedicated to Garfield's life as an orator, as a general in the Union Army during the Civil War. Lucretia will join him when she passes away in 1918. And there's a, uh, there is a statue of Garfield inside, a 12-foot statue, a marble statue of President Garfield inside this mausoleum as well. So the 20th president of the United States, President James A. Garfield, buried here at Lakeview Cemetery. This is him as a teacher. He was a professor at uh, Hiram College. That's where he went to school before he got into politics. And that's what this is a picture of. When Garfield is shot in the train station in Washington, D.C., Robert Todd Lincoln is with him. Wait a minute. That was 16 years after his father, Abraham Lincoln, was shot. So it made a big influence on Robert Todd Lincoln. He was Garfield's secretary of war and happened to be with him in the train station that day. This picture on the side of the mausoleum actually depicts him in his deathbed. He actually dies in New Jersey at Oyster Bay. Alexander Graham Bell tried to find the bullet in him and develop this magnet system so they could find the bullet. Unfortunately, the springs in the mattress were giving off false positives of where the bullet was. Even though that would have worked if he was on something else that didn't have metal on it, it didn't work in this case. Higby, I think this is the uh, department store, the big department store in Cleveland, Ohio, that's depicted in a Christmas story. Tell us about all this peculiar activity we're looking at. Public Square in general, and Higby's in particular, is the scene of a movie. It's called The Christmas Story. Here I am at the grave of John D. Rockefeller, the first billionaire in America. He's the founder of Standard Oil and monopolized oil in America, basically cut out all the small businesses overpriced their transportation so they couldn't supply oil and monopolize the oil industry in America. What he did to build his fortune actually changed the law in which companies can now own commodities. Uh, he did do a lot of philanthropy. Of course, he's going to build 30 Rock in the middle of New York City, but people today can acc accumulate money like he did in this industry. John D. Rockefeller will die at 98 years old on May 27th, 1937. So here's Rockefeller's grave. And as you can see, people will leave money on his grave and they leave money because they are wishing that their money will double and triple just like Rockefeller's money doubled and tripled. People also leave money along the obelisk here and just leave change along his name. He's buried beside his wife and he's buried beside his mother. First billionaire in America. So this is the grave of Henry Kelsey Devereaux. And Henry Kel Kelsey Devereaux is the model for Archibald Williard's painting, The Spirit of 76, which depicts three gentlemen walking home from the American Revolution, drumming, carrying the flag, playing the flute. 
Henry Kelsey Devereaux is the model for the young drummer boy playing the drums. And this depiction of these three individuals coming back from war has been repeated many times. I even think Mickey Donald and Goofy had, had done it one time. So he is the model for that painting. This memorial is to 172 children and two teachers who died in America's biggest school accident. It happened at the Collinwood School uh, on March 4th, 1908. It was a fire. Unfortunately, the children didn't understand that the doors opened inward and were pushing against the doors to get out. And they actually all got trapped behind those doors and died in the fire. But after this fire incident happened, this is when a number of fire laws come into place in uh, the nation. So you get your fire safety laws after this school incident occurred. While we were there, springtime visitors' cars line the cemetery streets to see Lakeview's Daffodil Hill. So I'm at the grave of Raymond Johnson Chapman, and he holds the distinction of being the only Major League Baseball player ever killed during a Major League Baseball game. He was actually hit in the head with a baseball. Happened on August 17th, 1920. Uh, he was playing for the Cleveland Indians. He's actually shortstop for the Cleveland Indians, and he was just 29 years old. As you can see, people leave baseballs and gloves in remembrance of him. Beside the grave of Elliot Ness is the grave of Harvey Picard, a comic book writer known for his American Splendor comic strip, which also inspired a film adaptation, People Leave Pens at His Grave. So this is the grave of Alan Freed. Alan Freed is notarized for coining the term rock and roll. He's the first person to put those words together to identify a type of music. And that is why the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is here in Cleveland. And here it is, Alan Freed's Rock and Roll Party. And here he is in person, Alan Freed. <laughs> of stars and here we go to rockin with Waylon Tenorman Freddie Mitchell and the rock and roll boogie here we go he's actually credited with the first rock and roll concert March 21st 1952 so this is the grave of James H Salisbury and James H Salisbury was a physician and he actually came up with the meat centered diet and so he comes up with the Salisbury steak what is it a uh, steak that's basically dripped in gravy for people to eat it. But he sees the health benefits of having a meat-centered diet, and the Salisbury steak is named after him. So I'm at the grave of Garrett Morgan, and Mr. Morgan is remembered for inventing the three-way traffic light and the gas mask. It says here, by his deeds he shall be remembered. And every day when you're stuck at a traffic light, you can thank Garrett Morgan and all those people whose lives have been saved by gas masks and by traffic lights can thank Garrett Morgan. This is the grave of Carl Stokes, the first black mayor of a major city. He was the mayor of Cleveland from 1968 to 1971. It says ambassador because he went on to be the ambassador of Seychelles. And I have actually been to the Seychelles. I was there for New Year's Eve in 2004, I think, with the U.S. Navy. So we're standing in front of the marker for Elliot Ness. Now let me welcome everybody to the wild, wild west, a state that's untouchable like Elliot Ness. And Elliot Ness is, of course, the leader of the untouchables but he was also the safety director here in Cleveland from 1935 to 1942. When he dies in 1957, he's actually cremated and he's, his ashes aren't really here, they're actually spread in the lake right behind here by the Cleveland Police Department. But Elliot Ness, is, his notoriety is for the untouchables. So he got together the 10 group of men who Al Capone couldn't pay off, actually, convicted Al Capone of tax evasion, put Al Capone into prison where he would remain for the rest of his life. And Elliot Ness comes here and he's actually put in charge of catching the Cleveland Torso killer. 
and he actually doesn't catch him. He never finds out who it is. It's something that will bother Ness for the rest of his life. He actually burns down a Hooverville shantytown where all the murders seem to be coming from, and that actually stops the murders from happening, but also displaces hundreds of impoverished people from the Depression here in Cleveland. Elliot Ness does not gain any notoriety during his life. It's not until after when a television series called The Untouchables comes out, and of course the movie in 1987 that gives uh, Sean Connery his Best Supporting Actor Oscar. You said you wanted to know how to get Capone. Do you really want to get him? You see what I'm saying? What are you prepared to do? Everything within the law. And then what are you prepared to do? If you open the ball on these people, Mr. Nash, you must be prepared to go all the way. As I walk through Lakeview Cemetery, I think about how this cemetery is not tied to any religion, it's not tied to any specific area. So you're getting people from all different walks of life buried together, memorialized together in their final resting place. It's bringing people from different social economic groups, different races, different religions are all buried side by side in Lakeview Cemetery here in Cleveland. Where else could I see a billionaire's grave right beside a president's grave, right beside an African-American's grave? And all of these people are equally as important in the end of their life. So thank you for joining me on this walk with history. Thank you for joining me with some important people who have impacted our lives and have impacted history.